Hey, what up? It's Oren Mays. I'm just going to jump right in. Uh, it turns out OBS Studio isn't just some OBS. It's actually very stable. Uh, the problem I was running into was no matter how I routed audio from Ableton to OBS through my external ASIO audio interface, in this case, my Complete Audio 6 or KA6 from Native Instruments, even using the uh, Reaper plugin Restream, OBS was still not recognizing any audio on the device. Now it was actually picking up the device, but not registering the audio, as in this case where we actually see a level coming through in the audio mixer. Um, I don't know why exactly, but presumably it's because like my KA6 is an audio-driven, uh, sorry, ASIO-driven audio interface and doesn't feed audio to Windows. So what we need to do is first things first to open up the web browser for uh, you know, whatever, whatever you're surfing with and uh, look up uh, the Reaper plugins, REA plugins or REA plugs. Uh, in my case, I've got the 64 bit, 64 bit version downloaded. I already, um, I already been there, done that. So what I'm going to do is go to my downloads, which in my case is, you know, this PC downloads. And the Replugs VST FX Suite is what I downloaded from their site. Go ahead and agree to the terms and conditions. You can uncheck these if you don't need them. They got some, some fairly stable stuff too, um, as far as I understand. But all I really needed was the Restream. In this case, you are probably only working with stereo. Uh, and if you're working with 4-channel, 32-channel, any of the above, then you're uh, deep in the nuts and bolts of uh, Sirius Pro Audio and you don't need me talking to you. So go ahead and install. Uh, just bear in mind your destination folder is C Program Files VST Plugins uh, REA Plugs. You do want to keep that because that's what uh, OBS Studio is going to recognize later on. You can go, go ahead and, and uh, install that. I already did, so I'm just going to cancel setup. Uh, but you go ahead and install that. It'll take two seconds. And um, so what you do now is um, using your installer, you've already got the two channel. You've kept the default location. Um, you want to, here, I'll just go to my, um, to where it was. You want to copy that over to wherever in, in your DAW you're, you're drawing from your plugins in your registry. Uh, in other words, if you go to program files where it was just stored, VST plugins, where are we? And uh, replugs, you can either right click to copy this or go in uh, and uh, right click to copy the Restream standalone DLL. That's your um, VST. And you'll want to put it wherever in your computer your plugin directory is in Ableton. So let's go over to Ableton. That's where we need to be right now. Um, live. That's my DAW of choice right now. And uh, I've already copied um, the replugs folder into my VST uh, plugin directory. You may need to rescan or close Ableton and reopen it in order for Ableton to recognize that you've moved it um, to your appropriate um, you know, location on your hard drive or whether it's internal, external, whatever you're working with. Here's my plugins. I did a rescan here. It's under preferences, you know, options, preferences. Under plugins, uh, you can do a rescan. Um, my, my directory is program files, native instruments, VST plugins, 64 bit. That's where I keep everything. I got a copy of everything there. And in my case, the whole, fi the whole uh, file folder, replugs, was scanned in Ableton. I dropped an instance of it in my master channel here. I already brought it over here into the master. Uh, I put it at the end of my signal chain, which in the case of the master channel only has my um, a limiter, a really nice one by, uh, it's the Ozone 8 part of their little mastering suite. I've got that all configured, but I've got the restream here, their plugin set with an identifier default. You want to keep that name. You can have multiple instances sending and receiving um, different audio from different uh, sources. And in this case, default enabled. We want to send audio slash MIDI to a local broadcast. And of course, it's going to have the default two channel uh, out or send. And we want to receive that 
in OBS Studio. Let's see, you've rescanned. Again, just know your direct your registry locations. Uh, just write things down if needed. You shouldn't need me to tell you that. Uh, you're probably, you know, up to your eyeballs and in information. Don't need me to say that if you're watching this video, because this is kind of a specialized thing. Um, so here's what we're looking at. Uh, in this case, we need to um, drop an instance of uh, restream in the master. We did that. We need to configure the send parameters. We did that. Now we make a one measure silence track. I got ahead of myself. I need to remember that um, in order to do what we're doing, we need to trick OBS into uh, doing what it does naturally for everybody else under the sun who's not using an ASIO. In this case, bring your master in Ableton or whatever your DAW of choice may be down to zero and highlight a small section of unused project space, just a measure, and then you can go to export audio video. We're just creating a moment of silence that lasts just a few seconds long. I'll go ahead with a wave 16-bit, no dither, export. Remember where you're dropping, uh, in this case, call it silencio. And I, I already made one, so I'm not going to drop it on my desktop here to silencio. Uh, you should know what you're doing there already. Um, I already created a Silencio 1 and a, I created a Silencio 2 because my microphone isn't routed through Ableton. It's a really nice mic and I don't want to use a headset mic and I don't want to use any of the uh, sound drivers on my computer or anything because they're all Garbo. And what I really want to do is have an instance of machine handling my microphone. That's how I've actually got that routed and I'll show you how that works in, in a moment once we tackle the main thing we got to tackle. So I've taken care of that. I've gotten a little segment of sound that I needed from over there. Uh, just for my own grins and giggles, I'm going to um, reposition this and just have it set to loop something different. And I'm going to get things situated over here. Um, sure, that's a nice place, right? I'm sure that's a nice place if I have my audio zeroed. All right, everything's running and working and doing what it should there. Um, all right, so we'll go back over to OBS, uh, as I previously indicated, and picking up from there, we're going to Sources and Media Source, in this case. Go to the little plus under Sources and select Media Source. I'll walk you through this. Um, I'll call it Ableton 1, and um, so I'm creating new Ableton 1, Make Source Visible, click OK. Pretty much default stuff. So local file, we want to browse, and I remember where I stored things. I went from my desktop to uh, sample backup. I have a little folder on my desktop that just houses some temp stuff. And I made that Silencio. I made a Silencio 1, Silencio 2. You can either do two bounces or mix downs or whatever you call them, or you can copy and paste to any given folder. In this case, I'm using Silencio 1. I do want to loop it. Remember to check that you have to loop it and keep the rest as it's uh, configured in, in terms of defaults, such as restart playback. Show nothing when playback ends. Sure, that's fine. Okay. And what we have here, you'll notice that as Ableton 1 is doing the thing it's doing, it's got a little loop of the Silencio wave that I created running continuously. That was the kicker. And from there, uh, you need to install the uh, VST to receive the re restream uh, send that's coming out of Ableton. So you right click the Ableton one that I just created, you go to filters, and in this case under audio video filters up top you hit the plus button, you go to VST2X plugin, you create a name of this like Arsrama, and that's fine, whatever, I'm just giving you a little, little demo here. Then select under VS2 plugins, you select the plugin. I have mine all the way down here at this litany of nonsense. Restream standalone. Uh, you've got that. You can open the uh, plugin interface. The identifier um, is already being used by another channel. In fact, I'll close and show you why that's not doing uh, what something else is already picking up. Um, I'm going to delete this little dud that I just walked you through. Uh, again, I do want to stress that filters is how you get to the plugins. And I've got the right plugin, but it's already being received by another uh, input 
in this program. Uh, open the plugin interface, and it will be. Sorry, takes a few. Uh, the identifier was default coming out of Ableton here. I'll show you how it's routed again. Uh, restream. Uh, default enabled sending audio local broadcast. The name of the identifier here in Ableton will have to match the uh, receiving identifier in OBS. So let's go back to OBS. And, uh, you know, so it's default. Here's what it actually looks like when it's working right. You've got the loop playing in the background. Um, Ableton 1, I'm going to remove. Yes, and here's what it's actually doing um, in the instance where you can hear audio coming through. There you go. Uh, default enabled. Okay, so that's doing what it should. So that's receiving that. You're not going to see the microphone input level there. Um, but, you know, just to show you what, what it looks like and where it is on the audio mixer. You can see the loop is running silently in the background, and that's the only thing that I could do to trick this thing into playing a, a plugin over it. I'm just triggering the playback with a, a external controller by push two here for Ableton, and that's making it drop in and out. Again, I have it uh, so that it's not going to clip. It's it's limited at minus 0.3 industry standard nonsense. Um, and uh, my microphone, you know, that's it. So that's the kicker. You know, we're done there. But if you want to keep watching for one minute, I'll show you how I route things. My microphone is going into the KA6, the Complete Audio 6 by Native Instruments as well. Um, I've got a very small effect chain. Uh, first thing I want to do is I've got my, you know, my, my sound going to input. It's just all default, you know, um, group one, sound one. And my input that I've selected, because I got, just for to show you grins and giggles, my input 2 in my KA6 actually registers as input 1R because they're stereo paired. So if you got a mono input like a microphone like this, you want to go 1L, 1R if you got input 1, input 2. You know, just get to know your, you should know your audio interface. Anyway, um, there's that, and I've got a small effect chain starting with a gate. Um, and I've got a limiter. And I've got the, an instance of re a standalone. Now the identifier is different. All the routing parameters are the same. Enabled, send audio, media, local broadcast, default audio channels too. And I've got the identifier name default two. Now that's what I'm sending as default two. I've got a total of four instances of this plugin, one in machine, one in Ableton, and two in OBS Studio. Now that's being sent as default two, and it's also being received in OBS Studio as default to. Uh, here's what I did. Again, I did the uh, under sources, I hit add. Under machine mic, the filters were the same. DST2 plugin 2 is the name that I gave it instead of DST2 plugin. And this one has an instance of re standalone, uh, sorry, restream standalone. Uh, I called this one default 2, and now it's receiving the default 2. I had to um, close it out in order for it to understand when I type the number 2 in there. And um, you, know, you can see, the uh, there's a little bit of latency, maybe about a 28 millisecond uh, latency. That's due to the buffer size of my KA6 as set to uh, 1028 samples. So that's got a good, uh, you know, 26 to 30 millisecond delay in the first place. But this is receiving the microphone audio separately. The reason this is very helpful is that you don't actually have to route your microphone into Ableton. Because when you're in Ableton, you may uh, be in the middle of doing a tutorial and you may solo something out. Now when I'm soloing out individual channels here, that would normally choke out the microphone if my microphone was routed as an audio track in here. Um, you know, I can show you what that's all about. That would be coming through in, in redundant, redundant terms, terms like, like this. this. Uh, again, <laughs> you're doing pro audio at this point, so you want to uh, avoid redundancy. You want to avoid monitors. Uh, I should have said this earlier, but you know you would have gotten feedback loop if you're using. Uh, by monitors, I mean speakers outside of your headphones or anything in the room. 
you create a feedback loop and you can blow your stuff uh, to smithereens. So, uh, you know, that's that as far as the way you want to route things. You definitely don't want your microphone to be in here if you have an instance of machine available to you. But if you have to use your DAW, you have to use your DAW. Just make sure that you um, hit control and uh, solo so you can mul solo multiple channels and still hear yourself talking while you have things soloed out. You know, it's a small workaround, but it's a, it's a little bit visibly labor intensive and not that attractive to look at. So that's it. Thanks so much for that. You know, hope you enjoyed, uh, you know, the thrills and the chills and the spills. It's solid. It's a, it's a good environment. It's not that CPU intensive or anything like that. And, uh, you know, if you like it, you know what to do. Appreciate you. You appreciate me. That's how this thing works.